Okay, so I was recently requested to update a knockdown stitch using the modern version ink stitch 2.2.0. And on top of that, I have my own new way of doing a knockdown stitch, which is a lot simpler, easier, neater, cleaner, whatever you can throw at, whatever adjective you can throw at it, it's better. I'm going to show you the way that I was doing it as I had you draw a shape duplicate it so there's two shapes go into params turn off the underpath turn off the underlay come in here and then we'll change our settings uh, spacing between rows I think I put it 1.25 let's go with 1.5 and nowadays sometimes depending on the fabric that I need the knockdown stitch on I'll actually go two and then change the angle degrees the angle of stitching 45 hit apply and quit go to the other one and do the exact same thing but in reverse angle and I always had trouble with the angles there's a reason I'm a truck driver so on this one we would do the exact same thing we would turn off the underlay turn off the underpath um, Spacing between rows, we'll go 1.5. I think that's what I did. And then opposite of 45 degree angle, is that minus 45? Yes, in this case it is. So when we stitch this out, we get two layers of a really wide, far apart stitch that resembles a, a knockdown stitch. Well, there's an easier way. There's, there's actually a much easier way. I'm going to get rid of that completely. Hit delete. Now, in the new way that I do it, I draw my object. One time, no duplicates. Go into params. I do uncheck underpath because I don't want all those lines all over the place. You'll have to uncheck underpath on the fill underlay as well go back to fill stitch go back to the top layer fill stitch now this is where you do most of your magic spacing between rows I'm gonna put at 1.5 and and then our angle 45 degree angle and then we're gonna go to fill underlay and we're going to do row spacing at the same number 1.5 our fill angle is automatic. It will automatically do the underlay in the opposite angle. So when we set fill stitch angle at 45, the fill underlay will automatically set to the opposite of that 45, which on the other example I put minus 45. So that's it. That's it. So much more simple. And we have the exact same stitch out so that is how I do a knockdown stitch in the modern ver current version of ink stitch and let's say for example you had a you did some lettering isn't that interesting what was I doing last time that I had that kind of angle I have no idea. It is one of these. Yes, that one. So let's say I'm going to stitch that out. Let's make it a darker color. And I'm going to stitch this out on some kind of a um there, there's two ways that I could do a knockdown around this. I can draw it out. And I'm going really fast, so this isn't going to look very good. And then no stroke. Give it a fill. And we want that knockdown to go first, so we're going to put it underneath. I want a different color fill. There we go. So in this case, I would I would do what I exactly what I just showed you. Go to params. Go to 
spacing between rows. I'm going to make that a two. And then um, angle line, a 45 degree angle, just like I did before. And uncheck underpath, uncheck underpath, and row spacing, also two. Hit apply and quit. And then when you stitch this out, um, I didn't. Let me just do a real quick object to path and real quick break apart just in case. This is just for an example. So now it should stitch out. Do a quick troubleshoot. Everything's valid. Extensions ink stitch. Let's do a realistic preview. So, you know, I would I would definitely have done the letters themselves as a satin stitch, but just as an example, that would that's what my really quick and dirty knockdown stitch around it would look like. So the other way that I would go about doing a knockdown for lettering, I'm going to start over for one thing. Let's spell it right. There we go. And again, let's, we're going to pretend that this is a satin stitch and I picked a standard font that is similar to the satin stitch. So this is just an example. So my underneath layer would be the knockdown over over the, the the above layer would be the satin stitch. So I'm going to take the below layer, and on that one we're going to do an object path. We're going to select all of the objects. We're going to go path union. Now we're going to go to effects, which you get to by path effects. We're going to hit the little plus button. We're going to do offset. And now we're going to make it fat. Fat enough that all of everything touches everything at some point. Now, let's make that a little bit different color. That's so much better. And then we can shrink it down to fit. We're going to shrink it down a little bit so that it fits better. And I'll show you how to close that hole in. I'm going to hide the above layer text. And we're going to go to this. Oh, we need to do path, object to path. Now we're good. Now just take all of those bits and delete it. Now we can unhide our above layer. Now that bottom layer is the one that we want to do knockdown. So we're going to go right into params. And now we're going to do that same magic. We're going to do uncheck underpath. We're going to go spacing between rows is going to be two and angle is 45. Go into the underlay, uncheck underpath, row spacing two. Boom and a boom. Outstanding. Check it out. So now going to view the whole thing together. Room zoom zoom. Oops, I must not have selected both of them. Oh, I know. I didn't path that object path. Extensions ink stitch fill tools break apart fill objects. And now we can see both layers in a preview ink stitch visualize and simulate. Outstanding. So there is our under our, our knockdown, and you can shrink that knockdown more if you want it to fit together a little better. That was just a really quick example. Anyway, that's it. That's knockdown. That's the modern version. That's the way I do it now in Ink Stitch 2.2.0. Again, until next time, thanks for watching.